In this quick tip, we'll take a look at using masks in Pro Show Producer. Just like working with Photoshop, in Producer, you can use masking layers to creatively control the visibility of objects located beneath a mask. There are two types of masks to choose from in ProShow, grayscale and transparency. In this video, we'll be looking at grayscale masks. Now, if you're already familiar with masking in Photoshop, grayscale masks in ProShow are similar to a standard layer mask. With a grayscale mask, the visibility of what's under the mask is determined by looking at the light and dark values of the mask. The general rule of thumb with a grayscale mask is that light reveals and dark conceals. For example, let's say you have an image that's half white and half black. When attached to a layer as a mask, everything under the white side of the mask will be visible, and everything under the black half will be completely hidden. Any image or video can be used as a grayscale mask, but the best option is to use images or videos that contain high contrast between light and dark areas. Ideally, pure black and white works the best. Let's take a look at an example and then walk through how a grayscale mask was used to make the effect. Here we have two images that are blended together, and as the slide plays, we see a parallax motion effect as one image zooms out while the other zooms in. Now let's see how this effect was made. In slide options, here in the layers list, I have two images that should blend together nicely. What we'll want to do is add a mask to layer one that will reveal the left side of the image while concealing the right side, which then allows us to see layer two underneath. First, I'll reposition these two layers in a way that I think will work best when blended by the mask. I'll select layer one, then in the preview, click and drag it over to the left. This should give me plenty of room to work with over on the right side of the slide frame. Next, I'll select layer two. Then, in the preview, I'm going to right click and change the preview to darken inactive layers. This will make layer one semi transparent in the preview, which will help me find the best position settings for layer two. Now, remember, the basic rule for a grayscale mask is that light reveals and dark conceals. But if we use an image that's exactly half white and half black, we'd end up with a hard edge like this. To blend the images together, we'll need to add a mask that gradually goes from white to black. To do that, we'll need to add a gradient layer. So, in the Layers list, click the Add icon. Then from the menu, select Add Gradient. In the Presets drop-down menu, let's select Masks. This option here should be perfect for our needs, as we have a pure white to reveal on one side, pure black to conceal on the other, and a nice blend from white to black here in the middle. We can customize the gradient to better fit our needs by adjusting the angle, and by clicking and dragging the color stops to change the position and size of the blended area. Now click OK to apply the changes. Then, in Layer Settings, let's check this box to turn this into a mask. Then select Grayscale. Now here in the Layers list, this indicator shows you that the mask is now attached to this image. With the mask applied, it can sometimes be a little tricky to see exactly how the mask impacts your slide here in the Slide Options preview. Often, I find it helpful to drag the Slide Options window off to the side and look at the main workspace preview. Now right away, I can see I need to make a small adjustment to get a better blend between my two images. So, I can either go back and move the masking layer, or right click the masking layer, select Edit Layer, then select Gradient Options, and then adjust the position and distance of these two color stops. To finish the effect, let's add some motion. Let's click the Effects tab above the preview and select Layer 2. Click the Next keyframe over here on the right and reduce the zoom a bit. Next, I'll select Layer 3 and this time zoom in a little. Click OK to apply the changes and now let's see the final effect in action. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit our blog, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more helpful tips.